I came into the series after its inception. <coughs> you know, so for me it was like, oh, okay, this is cool. You know, and I'm a bit of a weirdo fan. <laughs> so I came in, and they basically brought me in to film it for Phil Hayes, who is a stand-up comic, who was the original actor. And so, you know, it's a mercenary soulless business. They went like, Phil went to the bathroom, he's not mad yet. Can we find somebody else that could do his voice? I think I was doing something else on it. But for me, that show was a riot because Hack and Slash were kind of never really part of the serious story arcs. And they would let Gary and I just improv, which doesn't happen. We would record one take as per the script, and then they would just open up both mics and we would go, yeah. You push the mic, I'm not going to push the mic, I'm going to go, oh, mama, who's like you then now, no, I'm not going to, boom, they go, like, okay, that was really funny, do something else, boom, we do that, okay, try something else, boom, I would say almost 100% of the time we used what we just kind of threw out there, so, you know, I'm just sitting there, and they say, well, is this show serious? Serious? <laughs> Man, <laughs> serious. So, yeah, for me, it was just, you know, so I'm just having a knock on us, it's just a knock, it's a bit. <laughs> uh, to answer your question, uh, a lot of people asked me what my favorite episode was, and it was uh, Wizards and Warriors. Yes! Thank you. I loved it because the, the premise of the show reboot was like reboot into a game, and then most times it was simply a reboot into the game and then run around and shoot or do things. Yet the Wizards and Warriors episode was like a Dungeons and Dragons, which was it was an actor within another role, so that I was playing Bob as another character within the show, which I thought was brilliant, which I wanted to do more of. And that was when we were at five o'clock shadow, and the line was, I have to uh, pull out a sword, I pull out a sword. <laughs> 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 by John Howard, if you remember John, you know John, yeah. so John wrote that, and they told me that there was so much script, it, in a 22 minute show, it was a 44 page script, <laughs> that, that, that they basically over, over animated it, and then they cut it down to the best 20 minutes, which I think is why it was so good, it was so dense, that episode, it was so good, yeah. Questions? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm I promise we're going to get to you. <laughs> Don't do a muscle. <laughs> <laughs> we all watch. Uh, at the end of season two, when Bob gets like launched into the net, we don't see him. You know, in season three. I saw that when I was like six years old. Years old, I was like devastated. I'm like, oh my god, Bob's gone forever. Did that? Did that whole episode happen because you had to leave and, and do something else? That's a great question. First off. I, several people have told me how traumatic that was. <laughs> I, I want to apologize now. I also want to apologize to your parents for not doing your homework. Because you were watching the reboot. I didn't realize that thing it was. Um, More less than Optimus. What? <laughs> what? Um, I had already gone, I think, almost half of the first season. California, so I was flying back and forth and I said doing sessions by myself. I remember recording that um, that episode in the line, the last line of the episode was me shot into the net, like in a tube or something, going, no, right? And I remember we were making a reference like, who shot JR, who shot Bob into the net? <laughs> um, it never crossed my mind that he would be lost into the net. Whatever. And, I, and I say this, um, Ian Corliss is, is a friend of mine who's been working together for 20 years, 25 years. This is before kind of the internet was big, like it was the late 90s, mid 90s. I had no idea that there was a third team that was still produced until it came to Aaron. So I had no idea that I had been replaced or that they were doing a third season until after the fact. So after her, I was like, okay, hold up. I was already doing my own thing in California. I was auditioning for other things, doing my own thing. I think it that saves you to bend your ringtone down to vaguely reboot. Should I answer the call? Do um, it. So, uh, you know, and then, you know, I've done a lot of things over the years while I've been acting and voice acting, and, and uh, I've gone to grad school in the States, and I ended up going to law school. 
And just as I was about to go to law school, I got a call from my agent at the time, and she said, hey, uh, I know you're going off to Winnipeg for your first year, but um, I just got a call from the people at Mainframe. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, um, and they're, um, they want to uh, bring you in to record at the movie, The Fog. I was like, what? <laughs> and she said, well, I said, but I was going to replace. She's like, no, you're going to do it. I'm like, great, great. She goes, and Ian Corlett will also be there uh, recording. And I was like, well, well one second. Who, who's Bob? <laughs> right? So she's like, I, I, don't, I don't really know this great this thing about top secret, but I actually thought that we were going to be brought in to both record it. And then they would choose who they like. Oh, oh no. Uh, oh. Uh, and then I got there and we found out the whole storyline, which was, uh, which is for real. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, well, Michael, hello, Scott. Hello. Uh, um, it, this is more, this is more of a deep part of thank you to the both of you because um, not only did you portray characters in the show that I enjoyed very much, but in a show that influenced my life greatly. Um, I, Reboot was was a very popular show that I watched when I was a kid, and uh, and because of it, I want. Uh, it, it was a huge influence on me so much that I pursued. Uh, my, my my degree in computer engineering, and now I work in IT. And so, uh, so Reboot has been a, a cornerstone of an influence on me. And I just wanted to offer my deep hearted thank you for for not only um, portraying the characters that you did, but also uh, being a positive influence in my life. Thank you very much.
45 whopping dollars a day. Wow. Oh, that's how you cut your teeth professionally in this business. <laughs> the show goes on. Thank you. You were great. And Scott, also, you don't really do that much on camera anymore. You still do? I do some. I mean, I do as it comes up. They need, you know, people that are straight. I've seen him in Star <laughs> movies. There was a film I saw you with Adrian Shelley. Was yeah. It? That's called Cindy Michelle. Cindy Michelle was a singer in her band. Who was her name? She's been a rock star, kind of David Lee Roth, and it's like we're all in this, uh, you know, uh, Ben Breakfast together. It was great. She's she actually is a lot of money. Good. I'm looking at Japan. You're still in Canada. I'm sorry, you should have retired. There you go. So she never published it. Uh, she sent a letter to her. Uh, myself, over the years, I've done so that I've never worked with her. I did less cartoons since I moved to the stage because I'm a celebrity. Uh, in the last year, I was doing a recurring role on Days of Our Lives as a, as an evil doctor, Chica. Uh, and uh, I love that. I love that six months into the job, I, I, I'm drawn to reveal my true identity. And then I reveal that I'm actually Hungarian. And I was 34 years old. Um, last week, I was on Modern Family on the first half of the uh, wedding episode, if you guys saw that. And, uh, you know, I do video games in the eldest roles online, Marvel, Universe Online, and several characters, uh, the Star Wars one. I told you the story yesterday. I audition for so many things all the time. I do it at home in my little studio. And you send them in, you forget about it. So about uh, a month or two later, uh, my agent emails me, you have a, a booking next Wednesday for something called The Old Republic. I look it up, I don't know what it's called. And I went like, holy shit, is this Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, it is. So I'm so, so excited. So I get to this studio in Burbank. I get there, and there's two guys, and they put down about a 400-page document in front of me. And I look at it, and it's complete gibberish. And when I say complete gibberish, it was actual gibberish. <laughs> and I look at it, and I go, what, is this a joke? And they go, no, no, this is not a joke. And I go, what, what is this? Because it's an alien language. You audition. <laughs> uh, or something, and it was some alien language. So I'm like, really? I have to do this? And he goes, yeah, because don't worry, just go on the booth and we will, um, we will play your reference, and then you will repeat it out of the reference, and then you can just make one your own. Now, uh, I wish I had this script. It was basically something akin to. It's 
Democrat, we have to. <laughs> <laughs>